Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to walk through step by step how to build this bench, which includes the hinged bench top, recessed lighting, and this hexagram pattern on the backrest. Stay tuned to the very end where I'm going to provide a full cost breakdown and tool list. Alright, first step in this build was to get to work on the frame. So I like to think of this frame as like the skeleton of the whole project. And this section here, which is the seat part of it, is like the, the spine where everything else is going to be attached to. So I'm taking two nice long straight pieces of 2x4, putting in three or four different cross members, and assembling it just using butt joints where the two boards are butted up together, pre-drilling and countersinking these holes so that the screws are flush. So after I got done framing out the seat section, I'm going to attach the legs using those pocket holes I already drilled. The shape of the bench is like an L. Attaching the legs is pretty straightforward. <laughs> so to help stabilize things, I added some more cross members for the legs. Again, just using some more butt joints. And after checking it for square, the frame was done at this point. So now it's time to put the skin on this bench or half inch plywood, in this case half inch maple plywood. Here I am just lining a larger sheet up against the bench and scribing out the height and cutting it out with my track saw. If I press right up on it, we're out of plumb by a pretty big amount. So I made these little spacers. There we go, Goldilocks. That's it. And the process is pretty much the same for the other sections of the bench, just getting the plywood on, scribing it out, checking it for plumb, and attaching it with some brads. Hello? Hey. Are you in the middle of something? Uh, kind of. So I'm actually using three quarter inch plywood instead of half inch plywood for the bench top. I just need something that's a little bit beefier since people are going to be sitting on it. So I think it's about time to address the elephant in the room and that is this hoodie that I've been wearing for most of the video. It's basically bulletproof. I've had it for about 12 years. It's withstood paint, glue, epoxy, anything you could think. It just keeps on going. Super warm, super comfortable. But I did tell my fiance if I did make this YouTube thing work that I would invest in a new hoodie. So I'm torn here. Every project always has a major mistake as part of it. I think I just miscalculated the height that the half inch plywood on the top of the framing would add, plus the bench top, plus the cushion, all of that combined would have just made this bench too tall. And for some of the shorter folks like myself, it would have been uncomfortable to sit on because your feet wouldn't be flat on the floor. So I had to take it all apart, hammer it all out, and take about two inches off of the plywood and the legs and reassemble everything. Now two inches shorter. So now I'm going to get to work on some of the trim work. Specifically, I'm going to build basically like a face frame, a square frame that's going to go around each edge using some 2x3 select pine. I'm going to be using pocket holes and glue for the joinery of the rails and styles on the face frames. I like to use clamps to keep the pieces as straight as possible when I'm driving in the screw, but always manages to move the pieces around a little bit, so it's going to require a bit of sanding to get any residual lip on here between the two pieces. And here I'm just using the 120 grit to get off that little lip. Hi, thank you for watching the video up to this point. If you've been enjoying it so far, please consider subscribing to the channel. It takes about two seconds, just gotta hit the little white subscribe button below the screen. And it's totally free to you and there's no limit on how many people you can subscribe to. And it goes a long way in helping creators make new videos. Thanks again, and back to the video. 
For the top piece of that face frame, I'm actually gonna be attaching it directly to the bench top instead of making it a full square because I actually want it to use it as like a handle for the bench top. And I did this with both bench tops, the long piece and the short piece. And same thing with the framing, both of which I brad nailed to the plywood directly with two inch brads. When I was Creating the face frames for the outside edges, I thought it might be kind of cool to add in some 1x2 boards across the middle, add it a little more dimension, make it a little more interesting looking than just a straight square. And I like the look of that better than just the square, so I went ahead and added in some more 1x2 strips in the already assembled face frames I made for these two inside faces. And these I'm just attaching straight to the plywood with brad nails. I'm not going back and taking it off and assembling it with pocket holes or anything. Also attaching some additional two by fours on the inside of the bench. So that will be where I attach the hinges that will connect to the bench top. So I'm using a Forstner bit here to bore out some holes for the hinges to sit in. I'm just using basic cabinet door hinges. And these were soft close hinges I had thought, but I don't think I got enough because it really doesn't close that soft. So after drilling out the holes for all these hinges, when I went to go put it in place, they were too far away from the backing 2x4 that the other side of the hinge was attaching to. And I think I had my template backwards when I marked out my holes for this so I went back remeasured realigned where the hinge should have been sitting and then I just came back with my router here and routed out that extra material so the hinge can sit closer to the edge of the bench top where it needs to be. So we got the hinges installed had the set back that 2x4 that's along the back side there so that the hinges would sit properly. So after the bench top was mounted it was time to work on the top part of the bench or the part that your back rests against. So I wanted the back of the bench to be angled a bit so it's a little more comfortable when you lean back on it. So I'm using some two by six for the support pieces that would be on the back of the bench. And I'm just kind of eyeballing a reasonable angle that I think will, will be comfortable when you lean back. I don't have a ton of room for it to be really angled, but I want to maximize the amount of space I have between the seat of the bench and the wall. So I'm just marking out an angle that looked good and then cutting it out with my track saw. And then just using this one as a template for six or seven of the other back support pieces I would use. I also cut out the plywood backing sheets that are gonna be the back support here out of three quarter inch plywood. So I thought it would look cool to have a design feature on the backrest part of this bench. So I picked up some cherry boards here. These are cut at half an inch thickness and I cut them down to a width of about three inches. And I mocked up kind of a hexagram shape here as a template and traced it out and cut a bunch of these down on my miter saw, essentially keeping my miter saw static at 30 degree angled cut and just kept rotating it around until a hexagram formed. I cut out, I don't know, between 50 and 100 of these things. I'd mess around with different layouts on the back just to see what looked good. Ultimately landed on this hybrid design where I was envisioning kind of a river flowing across the back of the bench and having these like half circle features on the top and bottom of the bench rest. So to cut out this arc or these like half circle features, I'm using this the old string method where you hold your hold the string static at a pivot point and just keep your hand steady and create an arc basically. So I decided on this this height I guess. I thought that would look good based on the dimensions of the backrest. And here I am making my tracing my shape out on some quarter inch plywood and cutting it out with my jigsaw. So the design I also had in mind was not only just to have some quarter inch plywood arcs, but I was going to have some lights that would sit under these. So I also cut out some arcs in some half inch OSB here, 
just slightly smaller so I can run the LED strips along the edges of these arcs and the oversized quarter inch plywood arcs would sit on top of these other sections and hide the LED strips. Also to run the actual LED strip, I'm drilling out some half inch holes here so I can run it along the edge, pop it out the back side and go to the next arc and so on so you don't actually see the connections. Wow. And I made the same pattern on the smaller section of the bench, just with one less arc. So here I'm just ripping down a couple boards of three quarter inch plywood that's gonna sit on the very top part of the bench. I wanted to put some recessed lighting on this section to light up the corner of the kitchen where this is gonna be sitting. And these are just mini recessed lights that are about seven eighths of an inch wide. So I'm using a hole cutting drill bit here to drill out the holes for those lights. And I'm spacing these lights up about 14 inches apart. So here I'm just brad nailing a couple pieces of quarter inch plywood to the bottom of the legs because I wanted to give the bench a bit of a floating look. And with that the bench was pretty much done so I was ready for finish. So here I'm caulking any of the corners with any gaps, getting it ready for paint and getting the room all ready and dust free ready to spray and just using some air to clear off some dust and now time to get the base layer of primer on trying to keep an even distance between the bench and the sprayer as to not create any pooling or puddling making sure I spray all sides and spraying out the different pieces for the backrest as well the top coat, I'm going with some Sherwin-Williams black enamel paint semi-gloss. And I'm doing two coats of this. I also made sure to sand it between the primer and the top coats and between the two top coats with 300 grit. Here. I'm relatively new to spraying paint, but it is a huge advantage as opposed to rolling or brushing on paint. Not only do you get a better finish, but it also goes on way faster. I guess the only cons here would be it is messier, it gets all over the place, and it uses a ton of paint, you just blow through a gallon like it's nothing. After I finish all the painting, I'm going back and putting some finish on the hexagrams that I cut out earlier. Hexagrams? Hexagons? I'm not sure. I'm using some Rubio Monaco finish oil here, just doing one coat just on the top surface. For the outer surfaces, I'm just painting them black since you do see some burn marks on there and I didn't want to have to oil them. And they will be seen because there'll be little gaps in, in between the pattern. And this was a very tedious process. So after all these were ready, I'm just laying them out onto the backrest in an arrangement that I thought looked good, just keeping the grains aligned and changing the, changing the direction of the grain when it's going around those circle features. So if you've ever done tile work, this actually might look kind of familiar. To attach them to the backrest, I'm using construction adhesive here and keeping the spacing between them equal using these eighth inch little spacers, which is a similar idea that you do for tile. I'm just not gonna be using any kind of grout or anything. And the process is pretty simple, just getting the glue on there and pressing down firmly with the spacers. I'm cutting out the little off cuts around the edges with my miter saw, which don't have to be completely precise up to the edge since I'm going to be covering it up with that overlapping lip of the quarter inch plywood. So I actually had some leftover engineered hardwood flooring boards from a recent project that it, I did and I thought it would be a cool application just to add it to the sides of this bench to give it a little bit more pop. I was born in it, molded by it. And these boards are actually made out of hickory, which is close enough to the cherry in terms of the color, so I didn't think it would be a huge issue. And I'm just ripping them down to size and gluing them on with some construction adhesive. So as I mentioned before, I'm going to have lighting on this bench controlled by these two dimmer switches that are running through one of the outer backrest 2x6 supports. 
So now I'm just coming back and caulking them in space, trying to be as clean as I can, but this was obviously super messy. After the caulk dried, coming back and just painting, doing some touch up paint. And after noticing how horrible that looked, I thought I'd get to work on cover to hide all that mess there. So I took a little off cut piece of Paduke hardwood. And it's gone. But I did recover it. And here I'm just drilling out a couple small holes for the knobs with a Forstner bit, keeping it clamped down as I do it and putting just a little bit of oil on it to harden it up and just attached it with some construction adhesive. So here I'm just coming back to that piece that I made for the very top part of the bench and just installing the lights. It's a nice tight fit and I'm just pushing in the lights and I drilled holes between those back supports there so that I can run the wire between each light. So after staging the two backrests in place, I'm just coming back and adding some half inch thick boards and just brad nailing them in place. This is just to give it a little bit thicker look and to cover up any outer profiles of those plywood arcs. And these boards were made out of that same cherry I used for the hexagrams, just painted black. And I'm coming back and just filling in the nail holes with some spackle and touching up with some paint. So now it's finally time for installation. So here I'm just moving the bench in place in its final resting spot, which is going to be in the corner of a kitchen for a friend. Everything had already been staged in my garage as I was building it, so most of this is just like putting together a piece of IKEA furniture, just a lot less precise. So here I'm just attaching that top board with those recessed lights on with brads and wiring them up. I have two different circuits on this. I have one circuit to those recessed lights and a second circuit for this LED strip here. So I basically need to feed the whole strip through the bench, through the top part, just feeding it through those holes that I drilled already. Once I have it all the way fed through to the end of the bench, then I'm coming back and taking off the strip, exposing the adhesive, and then just, then just pressing down and getting it attached to those arcs. Once I got the strips in place, I'm coming back with some construction adhesive here and attaching the quarter inch plywood arcs that I cut out earlier to overlap those edges and cover the LED strips. This is pretty simple. I'm also, after staging them in place with the adhesive, just tacking them in place with a pin nailer using one inch pins. And for the final pieces here, I'm just attaching a frame made out of quarter inch pine. Same process, just gluing it and pinning it in place. Final step here was just giving it a bit of a built-in look, so I cut out that section of baseboard and attached it to the wall with some screws. And with that, the bench was done, ready for the final reveal. So here's a breakdown of the different costs for this job. I have on the left a detailed table of all the different purchases I made and in the middle is like a summary of those same purchases. Everything came to a little over $1,000, not including little things like screws and wood glue. So on the right here I just have the different tools that I used. I'm not including some of the smaller hand tools other than the hammer which I still believe is the most important thing to have in your shop. I don't have the exact time it took to complete this job but it took between three and four months working in my spare time, mostly on the weekends. So I'd estimate anywhere between 50 to 100 hours in total. Yes, I'm slow.
that's gonna do it for this video i hope you enjoyed it we'll see you next time